Good evening, everybody. Uh, what is up? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So I thought that I would make a little video. Um, I'm going to be reviewing somebody else's video today. Sometimes I like to do that. We're going to be reviewing a video by this one, uh, I believe, British boxing channel uh, known as The Hat Man Strikes Back. I've known about Hat Man for several years. I discovered his channel pretty much when I discovered Dante's Boxing Nation's channel. And I never watched Hat Man as much uh, until recently. And I gotta tell you, in time, I ended up actually liking Hat Man's uh, content more than I like Dante's Boxing Nation. And the reason why that is, is because Dante's Boxing Nation, we all know where his allegiances lie. Uh, he is very biased, <laughs> and on top of that, he is a part of the LDBC slash new media, and all that means is that you're pro-black. That's all that means. The Hatman strikes back, according at least to my, you know, theory, or not my theory, but according to me, uh, and what I believe, he seems to me to be a very objective and logical person. And I like objective and logical people. I think that's the best way to be. So when it comes down to the overall bottom line is this. We're going to hear what Hatman has to say about Deontay Wilder apparently wanting this third fight against Tyson Fury, at least allegedly, <laughs> when it comes down to the overall. Uh, not only that, but apparently Deontay Wilder's claims of getting cheated. And I'm going to go over them. I'm sure Hatman is going to go over some of them as well. And let's just see overall uh, what he thinks about it. Because I thought it was a very interesting breakdown. But let's get into it. When Deontay Wilder was WBC World Heavyweight Champion, he was a very loud, brash, braggadocious, trash-talking character. He was always up on social media. He would always be quick to respond to one of his rivals or Eddie Hearn when they directed comments towards him. But following his devastating stoppage defeat to Tyson Fury earlier on this year, Deontay's character completely changed overnight. He started acting completely out of character because it was radio silence from him. He became as quiet as a church mouse. I, I agree with that, and that is true. Uh, there was a several-month period, uh, even a nine-month period, if you want to go that far, to where Deontay Wilder was certainly more quiet than usual. And I agree with everything that he has said so far. Deontay Wilder usually is a very braggadocious, very outspoken type of character. Um, so it was very out of character for Deontay Wilder all of a sudden to uh, not talk as much or not be a spokesman for his people <laughs> as he so believes that he is. Um, Deontay Wilder has taken on this Black Panther, pro-black type of persona. So for him to all of a sudden be very quiet for a several month period is very out of character for Deontay Wilder. And to me, the way that I see it, that tells me that Deontay Wilder does not truly believe that he actually got cheated in the first place. Because usually people who believe they ended up getting cheated in a fight, they come out with it straight away. They don't wait for several months for people to speak their case for them, okay? So it is what it is. That's just my view on it. And as the months rolled by, and he was becoming more and more conspicuous by his absence, Tyson Fury started making videos and posts on social media appealing to Deontay Wilder to come and get the smoke. Asking him what's going on with this trilogy fight. Where are you at? But there was no response from Wilder. Complete silence. More time went by. And eventually Tyson Fury and his promoter Bob Arum ran out of patience. And they publicly announced that the contract for the trilogy fight with Wilder had expired. And do I personally believe that the contract has expired? Yes, I personally do. Because apparently, Deontay, why do you have these guys? Oh, well, if the contract expired, why is he taking them to court? Well, that's the problem. Deontay Wilder is not taking Tyson Fury to court. Apparently, he's trying to take him to a mediation. 
a mediation is not the same thing as court. For those of you that don't know, a mediation is where both parties have to agree to be there for there really even to be a mediation in the first place. Tyson Fury does not have to be there. So it is what it is. <laughs> so you know what that tells me is that most likely Deontay Wilder, by the way that he's talking, and if it's a mediation versus an actual lawsuit, which is what most of these LDBC and pro-black members will try and tell you, um, if it's a mediation, that tells me that most likely Deontay Wilder did let the contract expire and that he's just trying to save face for his pro-black fan base. But it is what it is. Anyway, that's just my take on it. We're sick of waiting and therefore they plan to get Tyson Fury out in December against Carlos Takam, Ajit Kabayel. There's a bunch of names floating around. The fans started saying, well, clearly Deontay Wilder has chickened out of the fight. But suddenly out the blue, Deontay Wilder pops up today with a laughable video where he's got music <clears throat> in the background. Just comes across as unbelievably corny. I guess he thinks he sounds profound in this video. I don't know. But in the video, he claims that Tyson Fury used tampered gloves in the first fight, loaded gloves, as in with a blunt object inside for the second fight, and claimed that Tyson... They, they've alleged all sort of things. All of it has been bullshit. Um, they've alleged that his hand was lower into the glove, that overall that he had an egg weight in there. No, never mind, he didn't have an egg weight in there. His hand actually, you know, was at the top of the glove, and he was hitting Deontay Wilder with his knuckles, you know, because, you know, padding was removed from the part of the glove. All this stupid shit with these Photoshop pictures and all this other dumb shit, you know, it is what it is. You know, <laughs> as they say, uh, you know, a tree shall be known by its fruit. And Deontay Wilder and his fan base are the most pair of deluded people and idiotic people that I have ever seen in my life. I don't think I've ever seen a more idiotic sports fan base than the Deontay Wilder fan base. I mean, that's just my personal perspective on the matter. And I've seen a lot of stupid fan bases over the years, not just in boxing, football, NBA, you know, baseball, yada, 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 yada. All right, and the, the Deontay Wilder fan base, oh boy, <laughs> they they take the cake, man. I tell you what, but um, and it, it is what it is. Fury's ducking him, basically. But let me tell you this once again. I don't believe Deontay Wilder truly believes he got cheated. He, he can say all the shit that he wants to. I don't think he truly believes overall that he got cheated. Some of the things that he's saying and the amount of time it took for him to come out with this information. It's just not adding up for me. I don't think Deontay Wilder truly believes the bullshit that these people are saying, but he has to save face. And Deontay Wilder has truly shown his character that he is more willing to make excuses than actually improve as a fighter and improve as a man. But that's his decision. He also inadvertently admitted that he did receive an offer to fight Anthony Joshua. Now, we all know that he received multiple offers. That's right. And thank you for bringing that up because, and I've been saying this for the past, I don't know how many years, ever since Anthony Joshua was starting to gain more and more belts. I was saying this, you know, a couple years ago, that Deontay Wilder was never serious about unifying the division as he claimed to be. If he was serious about unifying the division, then he would have, then he would have unified the division. You know, he had the WBC belt, all the other belts were out there, all right? How come he didn't even get one of the other belts throughout his 10 title defenses? Not one? You couldn't get one? <laughs> and you're telling me that this dude, Anthony Joshua, that has like, I don't know, 15, like 17 less fights than you, and was not in boxing as early as you, at least not in professional boxing, you're telling me that Anthony Joshua is almost a unified champion of the world with one less belt than he needs to become unified. And you're telling me that Wilder had one belt throughout his 10 title defensive, which were usually against bottom of the barrel opponents, let's be real, besides Lewis Ortiz, you know, and I'm talking about opponents that he beat. But when it comes down to it overall, uh, you're telling me that Deontay Wilder was the one that was serious about unifying that division. Folks, let me tell you something. Whenever <laughs> you get these conversations 
about an Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford and who's ducking who. Whenever you get these conversations about a Vasil Lomachenko and Mikey Garcia and who's ducking who, and whenever you get these conversations about an Anthony Joshua and a Deontay Wilder and who's ducking who, pay attention to these people's actions. All right, don't pay attention to their words, pay attention to their actions. Because 9.99999% 9 .99, of the time, and nine times out of 10, the person that is unifying the division is more serious overall about taking the big fights. All right? That's the bottom line. You know, people can chat about, you know, chat shit about Terrence Crawford all they want to. There's a reason why Earl Spence would be the A side in that fight. There's a reason why Earl Spence has two out of the four main belts in that division and why he has fought way, way greater class competition than Terrence Crawford ever has in his career. But especially in the one to weight division. We need to take a look at Vasil Lomachenko versus Mikey Garcia. There's a reason why Mikey Garcia moved out of that division. And there's a reason why Lomachenko nearly unified the whole entire division. And why Mikey Garcia decided never to step foot at 135 again. All right? And when you take a look at Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder, there's a reason why Anthony Joshua has almost all the belts and why Deontay Wilder only had one throughout. 40 something fights. All right. It is what it is. Deontay Wilder inadvertently, which I said for years, especially ever since that the zone deal popped up and Deontay Wilder turned it down. Deontay had turned down a deal from Anthony Joshua to fight most likely in Britain because he was never serious about facing Anthony Joshua in the first place. Okay. He was never serious about taking that fight in the first place. Okay. And what were these idiot LDBC and pro blacks all trying to say that were on Deontay Wilder's side? Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, Anthony Joshua was offered $50 million to come to the U.S. And was, well, that's the problem. It was in the U.S. Anthony Joshua is not going to have that fight in the U.S. because Anthony Joshua is the A-side and he decides where to go. And people can get mad at that all they want to. I know I'm going to get some of these stupid ass people saying, oh, you know, to be a great champion, you have to go to the U.S. N not if you're the A-side. <laughs> not if you're the A-side, brother. You know, it is what it is. All right, that's the bottom line. All right? It is what it is. In the video, he was talking about how he basically, according to him, did Tyson Fury a favor by giving him a title shot. And in a sense, he's kind of urging Tyson Fury to do him a favor in return and also give him a shot. You see, if Tyson Fury was contractually bound to fight Deontay Wilder for a third time, then Wilder wouldn't have to say anything like that. I agree. He could say, you're bound to the contract and you can't go anywhere. You have to fight me. There's nothing else you can do or I'll see you in court. But he's not saying that. He's talking about, I did this for you in the past. I did that for you in the past. You're supposed to return the favor. As I've said all along, Deontay don't want this fight. If he wanted the fight, why did he wait until the contract had expired? And the fans were... Which it, which it does look like he did. Saying that he chickened out before he decided to say anything. Tyson Fury has been calling his name for weeks... Saying, where you at? What's going on? And Deontay didn't respond. He only responded after the contract expired. And his response has been absurd. Talking about loaded gloves and all this nonsense. See, Deontay has always been a delusional character. But I thought there was some hope for him. <laughs> and delu saying that Deontay Water is delusional is putting it lightly. This dude is on a whole nother level of delusion. And once again, I don't even think overall that uh, he believes the bullshit uh, that he's saying. But when you take a look, not only at just Deontay Wilder uh, overall, but his fan base, <laughs> his fan base is the most delusional group of people I think I've ever seen in sports history. I'm not even sure if there is a close second. But anyway... In the weeks and months after that loss to Tyson Fury, because he'd apparently reached out. Actually, you know what? I shouldn't say that because the Mike Tyson fan base, at least in boxing, they, they, they can compete with anybody. 
<laughs> but besides those two groups right there, I'm not sure about any other group of people that would be more delusional. To George Foreman. At Honda, we take the holidays seriously. Both with... And he was reaching out to all these other people in boxing. And to me, that was an indication of somebody who understood that they needed to improve. Who understood that they'd lost to the better man on the night. To me, that was a good sign. But unfortunately, he got rid of Mark Breland. The only sensible, I say sensible, Mark Breland said some foolish things as well over the years, but he certainly cared about the fighter. Let's just put it that way. And he was sensible enough to know that Deontay needed saving from himself in that, what was it, a seventh round or sixth round, whenever he got stopped. He knew he needed saving from himself at that point. It was in the seventh round. And Deontay Wilder is very lucky that Mark Breland was there. Because to be quite honest with you, <laughs> if Deontay Wilder would have fought for another couple rounds, he would have been flat on his face. So it is what it is. I mean, he was literally becoming a punching bag for Tyson Fury in the seventh round. You know, it was, it was, <laughs> it was getting bad. I mean, Deontay Wilder was just literally almost laying there in the corner, having no reaction whatsoever. And then finally, Mark Breland had the sense to throw in the towel. So Mark Breland overall, Deontay Wilder, you know, in time, he might learn to come and thank Mark Breland. But it's not going to be now. Deontay Wilder is not a, <laughs> what you would call, um, a three-dimensional thinker. Uh, he is not somebody overall who... Uh, can put pride aside, and I get it, we all can be a little bit prideful, but Deontay Wilder overall, uh, he just does not come across to me as a very understanding person of why someone would stop the fight. Deontay Wilder would rather die than have the fight stopped, but he is very lucky that Mark Breland was there to stop it, because had that fight continued, Deontay Wilder may have never been able to fight again, because, <laughs> and if he would have fought again, he would have never possibly been the same fighter again. So thanks to Mark Breland, Deontay Wilder might have a little bit left in his career. He was the only one sensible enough to know that. And now that he's out of the camp, and Deontay called him disloyal, can you imagine? How disrespectful. It's very unfortunate that Deontay Wilder is feeding into uh, this pro-black bullshit when it comes down to the overall and people can get you know they can get mad at that all they want to i'm sure i'm gonna have a lot of people that get angry at that or whatever i, I really don't give a shit um when it comes down to the overall you know very unfortunate i don't truly believe that deontay wilder believes that his water was spiked or anything like that deontay can state all this bullshit that he wants to but he ain't fooling me uh deontay <laughs> believe it or not he does not believe a lot of this stupid bullshit. If he truly did believe it overall, uh, he would have had an outrage. He'd be suing Mark Breland right now uh, when it comes down to it. Not only that, but he'd fire his trainer, JD's. If he truly did believe that Tyson Fury did something with the gloves because JD's was in the corner watching, or not in the corner, uh, but in the room of Tyson Fury, and they were watching the gloves, they were watching the hand wraps. All right? And usually, that's when tainted gloves happen. You know, like, people will bring up overall, like, all these things. Like, they'll be like, well, you know, uh, you know, Mar Marcos Maidana, he had, you know, these weird gloves with Mayweather and all his other stuff. Okay, and guess when that was caught? You know, that was caught before the fight. <laughs> so, it is what it is, you know. And you know when Margarito's hand wraps were caught? That was caught right before the fight. All right? So either JD's was not doing his right job watching overall, or it was completely missed by Deontay Wilder's team. But we already know that there was nothing wrong with Tyson Fury's gloves in the first place. But anyway. And he also criticized the referee. <laughs> now that he's out of camp, it's only full of jokers again. Like his brother Marcellus, who might even be more delusional than Deontay himself. And all of these demented fans that Deontay has. They're also filling his vacuous head full of nonsense. Why on earth would anyone take this guy's... Yeah, and you have these idiots. These, 
these Deontay Wilder fanboys who really are pro-blacks. Once again, let's just be real. You know, it is what it is, at least the good majority of them. But even some of the just regular Deontay Wilder fanboys that are feeding into this stuff. I mean, good lord. <laughs> the amount of idiocy it takes to actually believe in these allegations. It's just ridiculous. If you have any common sense and if you know anything about boxing whatsoever, you can basically disprove all of these <laughs> all of these things, you know, that they bring up. But it is what it is. Anyway, you know, and you're going to have some people saying, well, Deontay Wilder just looked so different in the rematch. I think his water was spiked and all sorts. So you had people saying that even after, you know, right after the fight. Most of these allegations have happened a week after the fight happened. But you had people even, you know, alleging that right after the fight. Deontay Wilder didn't look any different to me. You know, people mentioned his legs and all that stuff. His legs really didn't start to go until about the third round when Tyson Fury knocked him, you know, down. So... It is what it is. Which, of course, people allege was a punch behind the head. No, that was not a punch behind the head. That was a punch behind the ear, which is not an illegal punch. So it is what it is. All right? <laughs> it's whatever. But when it comes down to the overall bottom line is this. The reason why it looked like Wider's legs were done is because, first of all, his stamina and conditioning are overrated. He does not really have great conditioning. He never has. He has never had a good gas tank. Uh, on top of that, when it comes down to it, Tyson Fury was hurting him. And on top of that, Wilder has horrible balance, and he has horrible footwork. So it is what it is. You combine all those things, his legs are going to look a little bit shaky. Combined with a 270-something pound man hitting you repeatedly. So it is what it is. Claims that he wants to fight Fury seriously. When he stayed dead silent and allowed the contract to run out before he decided to say anything. <laughs> Dear, oh dear, oh dear. I knew that the Tyson Fury defeat had devastated him psychologically. But it's even worse than I thought. He's back into this bizarre delusional mindset, which is encouraged by a lot of his fans. Deep down, Deontay knows that he don't want no smoke. He knows that. I agree. All he's doing right now is trying to save face by entertaining all these ridiculous claims by his fans and by his brother about tampered gloves and loaded gloves and all this nonsense. Acting like Fury's running. A, he's just trying to save face. That's all it is. Now, I've also said all along, there are people in Deontay's camp who want the rematch. Shelly Finkel, he wants it. Al Heyman wants it. JD's wants it. Why do they want it? Because they want to get paid. They know Deontay doesn't have many years left in this sport. This might be his last decent payday. So they want to secure the bag now. They don't want it to allow this fight to float away. But I am as convinced as anybody possibly could be who isn't an insider in that Deontay Wilder camp, that Deontay don't want it. I suspect he's been making a meal out of some of these rumored injuries to try and drag the situation out as long as possible in the hope that Tyson Fury moves on. That's my suspicion. And again, if this contract is valid, then they can take legal action and force Tyson Fury to get back in the ring with him. Which, according to all the LDBC members, oh, Wilder's taken, you know, he's suing him. He's taking him to court. I've heard nothing about Deontay Wilder actually taking him to court. I've heard about mediation, which is not the same thing. <laughs> but it is what it is. Don't let these idiots fool you. All right, don't let these LDBC channel. A lot of these idiots don't even truly believe what the hell they're saying. So it is what it is. They're just trying to make a buck off you. So, it is what it is. Unfortunately, a lot of these idiots are being fooled. Because either they don't know anything about boxing, they're over-emotional, so they want to believe that Wilder got cheated, or they're just complete fucking morons themselves. <laughs> so, it is what it is. Anyway. For an immediate trilogy fight. If the contract is valid. If the contract isn't valid, you know, Deontay can talk about, oh, well, I did this for Tyson Fury and... I gave him a shot and I did this. And all. 
all that is just bluster. You had your opportunity to fight the guy. You had your opportunity to enforce the contract. Why didn't you? All the times Tyson Fury's called him out over the past few months, asking where he is. Why didn't Wilder respond? And one of the funny parts of this video that Ty the, uh, Deontay Wilder did, this silly video where he's got music playing in the background, trying to make himself sound profound, where he just sounds corny and silly. And one of the funniest parts is where he inadvertently... Menards is your complete plumbing and bathroom headquarters. Nobody has more Richmond water heaters in... He admits that he did receive an offer to fight Anthony Joe. We all know he received... And that's right, he did. So all these idiots claiming, oh, well, that, that contract was fabricated. It was DAZN's fault why that contract fell through. Deontay Wilder, all right, just admitted not too long ago that he received an offer from Anthony Joshua and he turned it down, okay? So that come, that came out of Deontay Wilder's own mouth. You, you cannot deny his words. He was stupid enough to tell on himself. So it is what it is. That's all it's about. And I know you're going to get some of these guys on here. Well, him and Tyson Fury had unfinished business. You know, that fight was mandated. Actually, that fight was never mandated. So anyone who's actually going to say that, they're incorrect. That fight was never mandated. Now, for the certain people overall that say, well, it just came at a bad time. Him and Tyson Fury overall had unfinished business. Deontay Wilder, haven't you been saying overall that there should be one man, one name in the heavyweight division? Didn't he say that stupid shit for how long, you know? Didn't he say that there should just be one name and, you know, one heavyweight champion? Isn't that what he's been saying? There's no such thing. Let me tell you this. There is no such thing as unfinished business with Tyson Fury when Anthony Joshua has the rest of the belts. And apparently, your main goal, Mr. Wilder, is to become the unified and the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. You know why he didn't take that fight? It wasn't because he had unfinished business with Tyson Fury. It's because he was never serious about taking that fight. And it is what it is. Multiple offers, but out of his own mouth, he admits that he received an offer to fight Tyson Fury. Uh, excuse me, to fight Anthony Joshua, which was more than the money he got to face Tyson Fury. So he's, inadv he's inadvertently admitting that he turned down better money to fight AJ and took less to fight Fury instead. Yes, but according to all these stupid Americans, <laughs> yeah, these stu I shouldn't say Americans, because not every American was falling on it, so I apologize for that. According to all these LDBC members and these Wilder fans and overall all the people that were pushing that narrative, you know, Anthony Joshua was avoiding Deontay Wilder this whole time. He avoided the fight. Well, now the truth finally came out. <laughs> so so it, it is what it is. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. This guy, as I've been telling you for the longest while, he's not the sharpest tool in the box. He's an exciting fighter, yes. And I enjoy watching him. But the character of Deontay Wilder, dear, oh dear. He's a country bumpkin. And... You know, I'm, I'm not trying to be derogatory when I say this stuff. But there are certain stereotypes about people from the country and the South in America. You know, some people just can't handle the truth. Some people are angry, you know, when you call a person an idiot. But if that's what they are, that's what they are. You know, <laughs> Deontay Wilder is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Hatman is correct about that. You know, <laughs> Wilder has shown this repeatedly. Not just in his fights, but also with the stupid shit that he says and the crowd that he falls in with. So it is what it is. They're all rooted in a certain amount of truth. And look, there are some very smart people from the South, from Alabama. But Deontay, unfortunately, is one of the stereotypical Southerners who speaks in a drawl, who isn't intellectually very sharp and who behaves a lot of the time like an impulsive child this is how Deontay behaves there's not much 
you know, cunning to the stuff that he does. It's so obvious. This situation that he's trying to, this stunt he's trying to pull right now. Trying to save face because of the fact that he allowed the contract to run down without saying anything. Now he's thinking that people are going to buy this spiel he's coming out with. We might well, let me tell you this, hat man. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of people are. And when I say people, I mean the LDBC and pro-black fans. You know, it is what it is. And Deontay Waters fan base. That's the, those are the main ones that are feeding into this shit. But a lot of those people deep down know that <laughs> that there's really no truth to these allegations. A lot of those people over are just so over-emotional that they're pro-black king. The Black Panther <laughs> 2.0 and Deontay Wilder, you know that he ended up getting knocked out against Tyson Fury. So it is what it is. I'd have bought it, Deontay, if you hadn't been silent for months and months and months, and you'd been as vocal as normal. We, we might have bought it. But you've made it so obvious that you didn't want to fight. <laughs> because you've been silent, totally out of character. And when the contract expires, oh, now you want to talk. Come on. Let's see what happens. <laughs> but it looks like the... Uh, I can't even swear on YouTube because of the algorithm. But it looks like it's going to be uh, more fun and games, more nonsense from Deontay Wilder. Maybe for the remainder of the year in terms of him piping up every now and again. With corny music in the background, trying to sound profound, and <laughs> it just it just sounds stupid. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm out. At Honda, we take the anyway. That's really about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see what happens with Mr. Deontay Wilder. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, and I don't think this is gonna happen. But hopefully Wilder leaves behind the excuses and actually starts to get into a bit of realism. <laughs> so he ends up becoming a better man, a better person, and overall a better fighter, certainly a better fighter. But I don't think that's ever going to happen because Deontay Wilder is too far down, uh, you know, into his fan base, uh, the LDBC. So <laughs> when it comes down to it overall... Uh, unfortunately, Deontay Wilder seems to care more about saving face than he does becoming a better fighter, you know, so it is what it is, but when it comes down to the overall guys, that's really about it. Personally, I agree with Hatman. I don't think that Deontay Wilder wants this fight and I don't think he ever wanted the AJ fight in the first place, <laughs> but it is what it is. Anyways, guys, that's really about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to y'all later and have a nice day.